Shalom. Welcome back to Kotak, you guys. All right, listen. I think I may have failed you guys in, in some some areas of code searching here at Code Searcher YouTube channel. And that would be with the fundamentals, the 101 of codes, Codeology 101, if you will. Uh, so I'm going to change that. And the reason for that, folks, and listen, it has to be done. It has to be done because, uh, and I'm not the code, Bible code police. I've said that before. But I do have to be a responsible researcher. Uh, some years ago, uh, back in the day, there was a basketball player named Michael Jordan. And he was one of the greatest you've ever seen. The thing about Michael Jordan is everybody wanted to be like Mike. Even me, I wanted to be like Mike. I wanted to slam dunk. So people would buy his t-shirts, number 23, some of his uh, basketball shorts, and of course, the Michael Jordan shoes. Somewhere up in $200 now for Michael Jordans. The reason I'm bringing that up is everybody wanted to be like Mike. But you can't be like Mike. And I knew a guy who played high school basketball, and he would come out on the court with Michael Jordan gear, and he thought he was Michael Jordan. In reality, he, he didn't even rate. He, he, didn't, he, he didn't even make uh, the varsity team. He just wanted to be like Mike. And so that's what we got going on. And I'm not going to mention any names. Um, but you can't just jump on YouTube and call yourself a uh, Bible code expert. And there's no school. There's no school. You, you can't go to college and get a degree in Bible code. But you do got to put your time in. You do got to pay your dues. And I put in a lot of time. And this is not just some game for me. This is not just a pastime hobby. It was at one point when it was something I did on my own, for my own, in, in, uh, you know, inquisitive mind. Yeah, it was a hobby then. If you are just now getting into Bible codes and uh, are, you know got the program, I encourage you to search. But to get the program and then jump on the YouTube, it's very questionable to me. It's very reckless and irresponsible. And if you're a follower of Yeshua, and you don't want to lead anybody astray, uh, there's got to be a sense of logic and reason there um, that you need to get a hold of. Um, you know, you can't just go take a couple of courses on YouTube and go perform brain surgery. They would not let you do it. However, there's no regulation on YouTube. You can, you know, make up a channel and do anything. You know, uh, we, we make soap here at, at Ebree Farms from goat milk. People make videos on YouTube about goat milk products. So anybody can do anything on YouTube, and I'm not here to regulate, but I do have to speak up, and I do have to do what I should have did earlier in this channel. And what I want to do, and it just comes when I've been reading this book. It was recommended to me by a good friend and a subscriber, uh, Centurion. I won't call him by his real name. He knows some of you know who he is. Uh, Centurion. I met with him in uh, Grand Junction, Colorado, uh, around Hanukkah time. And he told me I need to read this book. Now, I've read a lot of Bible code books, but this was one that slipped away from me. And, I'm, and I hated it dead because this is a very good one. And it covers a lot of the science and the math and the probability um, aspects of what codes is about. The folks, in reality... And I'm going to be very truthful with you. 80% of the time, when you're searching codes, and if you've got a code program, an accurate, a real code program, I'm talking about a magic code box on, on the internet. That's some brain dead monkeys on the other side giving you codes. I'm talking about a real program. And I've got all three of them. Bible Keys of the Bible, Torsoff, which is Torsoff, not available anymore, which was written... Um, by Rabbi Spielberg from Jerusalem. So it is the one that Glazerson uses. It is a very good program. And then there's Code Finder, Millennium Edition, which is a, a very good one. Uh, it, it is, to me, is a Ferrari. Uh, it has a lot of bells and whistles, Code Finder. It's a little too much for me. Um, I need it, you know, I'm good with uh, convertible Mustang <laughs> to use 
some analogies. I don't need all the bells and whistles that co-finder has. However, it is the best on the market. You have in that, you can search Hebrew, Greek, and the English. You can also search the monkey text. And I'm going to explain to you what a monkey text is. But a mo the monkey text in there is Gone with the Wind and War and Peace. And I think there's one more. <clears throat> now, a monkey text. What a monkey text is, is it tests, it is a, is a text that you can use in coding to test random occurrence. Okay, because there is what's called random occurrence. 80% of the time, you're going to find random occurrence. Okay, if I want to take you over to, and this is, uh, I'm going to include all of this in, and this is not a jab at this person. For the most part, most people out of the almost a thousand messages I've gotten in the past couple of weeks. And I'm sorry, folks, that I've been a little slow in getting things done with the uh, Shopify, uh, getting videos out. Um, it's, it's been very busy. Uh, I just got back in town from L.A. It was a couple of weeks ago in Sacramento. And so we've been very busy. But I need to take the time to do this and, and do this teaching. And then we'll get right back into um, the prophetic stuff. But this is... This is the example um, you do not want to be like. And so this is not a slight to him. But you need to understand what we're looking at here. In, in this hosh posh of letters and, and, and abbreviations, even in English. Bad thing. You, there's a... There's a variable in codes called a p-value and that is the frequency of a letter appearing in a text and that is calculated in the calculation so that that, that is what I have left off in my channel uh, in, in the teaching here was the, the the calculations and all the probability and statistic uh, numbers I didn't figure you would be interested or it may just be too much for some people to absorb so we didn't get into it now, now I'm seeing that that's not it's not a good idea to do that. Um, you need to have that fundamental to to understand that this is a science. This is not a parlor game, and this is not just uh, some sort of Ouija board. However, uh, you can have good and evil and anything, folks, and I mean anything. There are people that can take this and manipulate. And I would encourage you to go to look up the word manipulation. And the definition there is called witchcraft. When you manipulate and, and take it to a step further, manipulate to influence, you are practicing witchcraft when you do that. What you're seeing here, you can find in the Jerusalem phone book random occurrence. That happens about 80% of the time. You have a random occurrence of letters that come together. There was a man, or there is a man, named Brendan McKay from uh, an Australian college. He's an atheist and a mathematician and very good one. And he took up what was called the, the rabbi's challenge to find codes in something other than the Bible. Because there was, when the Bible codes came out with Michael draws in it, da 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 you know, there was a lot of people that came and said, oh, this is, you know, there's going to be, the adversary is going to come against and say, no, it's not possible. It's not there. Right? I mean, if, if, if the truth comes out and if the divine hand of the creator is shown in the scriptures, absolutely, the adversary is going to come against it. And, and I seen a video somebody put out about psyops, about the government in, intentionally putting people on YouTube doing this to sow misinformation to discredit the Bible codes. Then you think about Dr. Hans. Uh, he is a Jewish code server and an NSA encryptologist who you can find on YouTube but he's an Orthodox Jew that searches codes but uh, the point is, the government, the government, our government uses code, Bible codes and intelligence. And that's a fact, folks. 
Harold Gans, Dr. Gans, will tell you. He is an encryptologist with an NSA, and they use the Bible code in supercomputers to find, uh, to try to predict the future, in other words. You, you, you remember the, the, there are things that are happening, you see them in the news, but then right around the corner you'll have uh, some sort of um, training exercise by the SWAT teams. For instance, the Batman shooter in the movie theater. That city was training for that very thing to happen, and it did. How did they know that? Why is that? And it happens more than once. A theory of my friend Jim Watson, a good buddy of mine and brother, he considered one on, on uh, the Internet. He was talking one day, and he, he asked me, is it possible the government is using the codes to try to predict things before they happen? Uh, and it's very possible. It's very plausible. I mean, when, when Yitzhak Rabin was assassinated, and it was proven that it was in the codes one year before it happened with great detail, and then after the fact, finding other details that were known after the fact, um, Bible codes exploded. That's when the adversary came against the codes, and uh, there, ha there were many people that were trying to sow misinformation because... Obviously, the enemy does not want you to know the truth. So, when the farmer goes out, he's spreading the wheat. The enemy's coming behind, and he's throwing tares down on the ground. So, there you go. We got both. And you have to discern. you got to use your intelligence, folks, to know the difference. And someone told me, uh, you know, when they're training Treasury officers for the government, to find, uh, you know, f printed bills or, or fraudulent bills when they're making um, counterfeit money, that they study, they study the real thing intensely because when they see the fake, it's apparent. It's always apparent. They know the fake because they know know the real thing. And so I want you to know the real thing, folks. I don't want you to be deceived at all. I don't care what the guy says about me. It doesn't bother me at all. I know who I am and Yahuwah knows who I am. That's the important thing. So what he says about me is between him and Yahuwah. It's not. It doesn't bother me. So for the two messages that I got out of the thousand that were, uh, you know, coming against me saying, you shouldn't have said nothing, you should have, you know, you're both brothers. No, we're not going there. This has to be done <clears throat> responsibly as a researcher. So I'm going to teach you the difference between the real thing and a counterfeit. So bear with me. Now, many people ask me, what is a cylinder? So for instance, we're looking at a matrix he has here in the English, which is probably, I'm guessing, maybe 200 letters. I'm guessing. I don't know. If you've seen some of my videos, we, we, the matrix that you're looking at is roughly 5,000 letters in Hebrew. The difference in Hebrew and English is Hebrew is multi-directional. You can read Hebrew frontwards and backwards. The uh, English is very limited in directional. It's directional um, is very limited. You can't read English backwards. It doesn't make any sense. Sometimes you may have a word, occasionally, maybe two or three percent, that you can read backwards. So it's very unidirectional. It only runs in one direction. I'm not saying you can't find codes in English. You can. You just can't find them in great statistical um, it doesn't really matter uh, statistically when you're when you're finding something of random occurrence eighty percent of the time. What do you got there? Nothing. You got nothing. You got words that occur, uh, you know, randomly. If you had a, a group of monkeys jumping on a typewriter, is what I'm talking about. You would get random occurrences of letters and words coming together. For the most part, just nothing. Now, now the, the divine part of it is when you have something that defies, defies probability, 
that uh, is statistically impossible to be random occurrence. That's when you have something in a code. Just because you type in a couple of letters uh, on some, you know, English version of it, and you, and you get a pop up of, of letters, and there's even not even an access term. You have to have a focus term to to look at a cylinder. What we're looking at here is two dimensional, but in the computer it is putting it on a cylinder. And I'm going to use a couple of props here in a minute and show you something. A cylinder, and I got a couple of different size cylinders, and I'm going to do a demonstration to show you something, but. What we're looking at here um, is no more than, than like I said, Jer the Jerusalem phone book or any phone book in America. You can pull out any page and find random occurrence ELSs in it 80% of the time. And 80% of the time, they don't mean anything. What makes it special is that 20% that you find that is statistically impossible to happen by chance. It means a divine hand put it there. Okay? You cannot use abbreviations. Uh, it's not going to work. Just because you've got so many abbreviations in a matrix doesn't mean it is a valid matrix. But when you have detail after detail after detail after detail and many, 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 many letters of an access term, that's where the, the first part of unlocking a code is that like a cog in a lock. Each one of those letters. For instance, you've heard me say, and bear with me, a little rudimentary and crude uh, props here, but I have some, some rope, and I've marked it every so often with a black, with a black mark. These black marks uh, represents an ELS. The, the rope represents the scripture, the whole Bible from Genesis all the way. This is the scripture. One line after the other, like a rope. Okay? So, say we want to look for Kennedy. We're looking for Kennedy's. Uh, run off my head. Uh, and the computer says, okay, it's every 500 letters. You can spell the word Kennedy. So, it will give me every 500 letters. Bam. K E N in friends for so and so and so on down so it finds Kennedy and the scripture now the computer puts it on the cylinder so we're not looking at it in, in a line like a rope so what we're going to do is put it on a cylinder so let me show you what the computer does in the algorithms <clears throat> so just bear with me let me wrap this around and this if you heard me talk about wrapping around the cylinder this is it this is what it does it wraps this once it finds the word, the initial axis term, it's going to wrap it around the cylinder. The cylinder width has nothing to do with me uh, initially. You can change the width once you find the table. For instance, once I find this cylinder, I can split that cylinder in half and reduce it down to a smaller cylinder. That, that's it. You, you, you can't pick the cylinder size otherwise. Like, I can't search the computer and say, uh, let me see Kennedy on a skip of 600. It may not be there at 600. Uh, so you won't find it. So we're looking at Kennedy at a skip of 500, theoretically, on a cylinder of 500. Okay, bear with me just a minute. Let me try to do this quickly. So what we get is a spiral of the scripture, and I'm sorry for being so crude, folks. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to give you uh, some sort of visual of understanding. So now we have what's called a matrix. Okay, once you get a matrix, now you can start working a table. Okay, so when we're looking at one of my tables, we're looking at a, a, a uh, cylinder width. I'm just going to draw something here to kind of illustrate. Uh, usually, depending on the size of the cylinder, you're only going to see so much. For instance, and I'm just doing this theoretically. Imagine this as my computer screen, 
that would be for Kennedy theoretically the the section that we're looking at on a cylinder that would be the scriptures um, and, and you'd have the letters let me just do this and I'm doing it in you probably didn't spell that right anyway you'd have your letters vertical like this because it spiraled around and so this is now a table you start working your table you find the words that intersect the crossover using letters da, 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 da. and now you know you have a table okay that's in a tight you know in an area on a cylinder you find something uh, statistically valid that's when you find something uh, when you got many letters four or five letters is not very improbable it's not there's no no nothing uh, spectacular about that when you find many 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 letters and many details uh, very accurate details that's when you know you got something so uh, excuse me uh, like I said if it was 500 for Kennedy and we wanted to make that uh, that matrix a little smaller make that table smaller we would reduce it down to 250 half of half of 500 would be 250 so uh, it, the cylinder would be smaller so uh, now the bigger the cylinder is you are restricted on how many letters you can get because you start running out of letters. The bigger the cylinder is, um, you start to run out of letters vertically. Uh, and you start, remember, in some of my tables, you'll see a huge gray margin down at the bottom. Now, if it's a slender cylinder, you'll have huge gray margins on the sides, like in Isaiah 53, which we're going to be covering in this book, which has uh, in that one chapter, we're not, we're not talking about the whole book, we're talking about that one chapter of Isaiah 53. There are over 1,600 access terms that relate to Yeshua, that directly point to Yeshua as the Messiah. And that, that is on a very slender cylinder, which makes it uh, even more statistically um, amazing when you see that. So uh, we're going to be covering this book here. Um, and I'm thinking either doing a live stream from YouTube tonight or uh, maybe doing a, you know, maybe breaking that book up. I think we can do it in, in a few hours. And it's really important that we do this, folks, because you need to get this information so that you know, you know the, the, the real thing from the fraud. Okay? Because uh, it's not as easy as this. You can't just type in words and, and something valid comes out. 80% of the time, you're going to find junk that you can find in, in a phone book. And it's really sad that there, there's 118 views on here. So there's 118 people that potentially may have been deceived by this person. Then again, there could be 118 people that just want to see the train wreck. Okay, and don't do that. Don't encourage the guy. We need to be praying for him. So I'm going to do the responsible thing and teach you... Um, the fundamentals, Codetology 101, the Bible Code bombshell is what we're going to call it. And we're going to hopefully get it done within three hours uh, and, and uh, complete the book. It's loaded down. I don't have to do anything but read and, and show you the illustrations. And here's, let me just give you one example. Um, this, uh, by the way, the, the author of this is Dr. Nathan Jacoby, is, is the... Uh, one of the researchers is also Edward Sherwin, a um, couple of Jews that one's an agnostic. Dr. Jacoby's an agnostic, yet he's uh, done this uh, and put together some amazing uh, illustrations here. But I want to show you one that kind of slam dunks um, Brendan McKay, who produced a bunch of. Well, stuff like this. When the rabbi said you can't find codes in anything but the Bible, he produced a lot of random occurrences and said, oh, yes, you can. And, and it wasn't statistically impressive. Um, and he knew that. But you didn't know that. Any mathematician would have looked at it and said, oh, well, 
Uh, yeah. But, you know, the average person would have said, gone with the winds, got coats, my, my, my. And you would have run with it. And then, uh, you know, the, the fact that the Bible is encoded by divine hand uh, wouldn't have made a big difference to you. It wouldn't be impressive at all. Wow, well, you find codes in this and that and that. But you can't. You can't. And I've searched it. I've searched Gone Boy. I've searched uh, War and Peace. And what you find in there is random occurrence, folks. And I want to show you what a random occurrence looks like compared to Bible code in one uh, chart that I'm, that I'm fixing to show you. Each black line going vertically is an axis term. One of these axis terms in the Bible has over 73 letters vertically. There's a hundred, it's, the odds of that is one and 197 zeros. That's mind boggling. So this is what we're looking at here. Down in this corner, right here, I can't get a bearing on it. Hmm. Look at that. Right there. You see that corner right there? That's Brendan McKay. His tables in War and Peace. I believe it is. Or it's, uh, yeah. About Hanukkah. He did some tables about Hanukkah. And he found random occurrence right there. Uh, what you're seeing here. Man. Let me just back it up. How about that? Yeah. You see the rest of it? You got down the, the, the this corner here is Brendan McKay. This here is all Isaiah 53 right there. That is statistically amazing. That is a divine hand. Random occurrence, divine hand. Okay? So, and I'm, I apologize, folks, for the, for the uh, you know, just kind of <laughs> all over the place with that. Um, but I wanted you to see just just a little taste of what random occurrence is and what statistically impossible is. Okay, so uh, be looking for that. As a matter of fact, um, I'm going to go and pray about it. I'm, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. I may do. Um, a live uh, stream tonight from YouTube just like the Hagmans uh, do I've been praying about it many people have been asking me about going live again and doing some kind of live um, broadcast so they can have access to me and, and talk because folks I get so overwhelmed with messages and some of them are, are so long and so detailed um, that I, I just can't get to everybody so I had an idea and this is what I'm, what I'm going to do uh, and usually the ones with all the, the long messages are not supporters or even subscribers. They're just there to ask me a lot of questions that are ridiculous and, and want to take up my time. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to prioritize. Those of you that support this ministry, I appreciate you guys. And it's not a lot of you. Literally, this ministry, and I've been doing this for full time for two years, has been carried on the backs of about 10 people. 20 at the most. Some, some of those are just kind of random, sporadic. You know, every every few months they might give $100 or something like that. But I'm including you too. Uh, you guys will have priority on any messages, on any access to me. From now on, those of you that support this ministry will have full access to Code Searcher. By phone, by email, by uh, Skype, whatever you want to do. Then uh, that will cut out all... Um, all, you know, at least some of the uh, I don't know, volume after volume after volume of questions, you know, and and, and and maybe some of them are legitimate, maybe they are, but but I really feel in discerning that that it's just to waste my time, you know, that they just want to kind of dance around me with theology and doctrine and things like that, and um, so I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna pay attention, I'm not even gonna accept. It, it as a message um, but those of you 
and I count those that support this ministry, you believe in this ministry, you wouldn't do it. So here's my commitment to you. Those that give to this ministry will have full access to me every day, 24 hours a day. And I'm, I'm committing to you. That's, that's the least I can do for those that have stuck with me these two years and, and helped me. Um, you know, and it's not about working a job, folks. I was working full time, 48 hours a week, and then doing this another 30 hours a week when who gave my uncle, who was my employer, a dream and said, fire him and tell him to do what, it, what I put on his heart. And so I have ever since. Now, if I wanted to make $90,000 a year, I'd go work on the pipeline with, with a couple of buddies of mine. Uh, you know, but it's not about money. But I have to live. So I put the donate button there. It's not about me making money off doing codes. But doing 20,000 plus hours, folks, I mean, I'm sacrificing a lot. I, my my ex-wife divorced me because I put too much time in the codes, supposedly. Uh, that, that was the excuse. So I've dedicated my life to this because I believe in what I'm doing. I'm not here for me. I'm here for you, and I'm here for him. I'm just the vessel. I'm just the conduit to where he is passing this through. And they're going to be fakes that come along. And they're going to try to sow misinformation. They're going to put out prediction after prediction after prediction after prediction and say, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. Just so you're like, I'm done with codes. And I'm not going to stand for it. I'm not going to let the enemy do that. I'm going to do my part as a responsible code searcher and, and show you what's the, the, the legitimate, what's the real, what's the genuine and you'll know all fakes from there. So uh, I'm, I'm going to go pray about it, folks. You know, uh, I know the, the Hagmans, they broadcast tonight, too, so I, I don't want to be pulling from from their uh, viewers over there. We have a lot of the same subscribers. So um, I'm going to pray about it and see what to do on this. I may do, do it as a video series and upload maybe two videos an hour and a half piece because I'm, I'm thinking, because I've done read over... Uh, half of this book already before I come to the epiphany I need to share this uh, so I'm, I'm thinking maybe three hours will do it on the book uh, plus whatever uh, I'm, I'm at you know because I'm going to stop her once in a while and, and, and cover some things um, from there it's just nuggets that you're going to enjoy uh, and you're going to get it you're going to get it they wrote this book very comprehensively you can understand this this is not going to be over your head and that's, you know, why we're going to do it. And I'm thankful to Centurion for, for recommending that I cover this book. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Um, so let me go pray about it. And uh, I will make a post either in uh, probably Facebook and a couple other places, many places I can, and let you know um, when whether it's going to be live or where there is going to just be a recording. If, you, if we do it live, I will take your, your phone calls and I'll take your, um, your, your questions. We'll have a chat there and uh, we'll see how it goes. So it'll, it'll kind of be a, uh, an educational experience, also a test run of the live streaming capabilities of, of uh, this computer and YouTube. I haven't streamed from YouTube before, so I don't know what it's going to do. So um, hang in there. Bear with me if there's any, uh, you know, fumbling around trying to figure out the, the, the technology. Just just bear with me. We'll get it straight and, and get the information out. Um, so be praying for me, guys, that, that um, there won't be no slip-ups or any gremlins get into the computer because I'm still having to deal with hackers. There's evidence that someone's still trying to hack my computer. And uh, uh, which reminds me who was provided the opportunity for me to get a iMac desktop. And so I'll be praying about that. We'll be making that purchase as, as soon as the rest of the funds come in for that. And so we'll be able to secure everything uh, a lot better than, than we have been doing. So I'll be going trend, I'll be going completely over to Apple from Windows. We'll no longer be doing Windows, but go full-time Apple. And uh, I'm thrilled about that. I'm not a Mac person, but I'm willing to learn. So... Um, thank you guys.
Thank you for the many, many messages. Thank you for the surge of supporters. We're almost at 10,000 sub, uh, subscribers now, and, uh, and the surge of subscribers in the past two weeks has been incredible. And I thank you guys for subscribing to my channel. Um, I'm here for you. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to teach you and show you the divine hand in the Word. There's no other book like it. None like it. It is a book written for you from the Creator. And He didn't just put on the surface. We, we serve a deep Creator. He is deep. Who can know the height and the depth and the width? That's the codes. He is a sowed Creator. The hidden. He hides. So Shalom. You will bless you. And I will see you. I will see you soon. Thank you.